Hello everyone, Sir Gantelot here again, back with another lesson to help you prepare for your PMP exam. Today we'll be talking about Earned Value Management, and this is one of a three-part series. In this particular session we'll talk about the basic concepts of Earned Value Management. Let's look quickly at where Earned Value Management fits into the Project Management Body of Knowledge, and specifically here I'm talking about the fourth edition. Well, to find Earned Value Management, you'll need to look at the Knowledge Area, Project Cost Management, and then the Process Group, Monitoring and Controlling. And the specific process concerned is Control Costs. In the earlier version, the third edition of the PMBOK, that process was called Cost Control, by the way. So let's look at that Control Costs process. And of the technique, tools and techniques within that process, Earned value management is the first one listed, but more importantly, it also feeds in or is associated with every one of the other tools and techniques there as well. For example, one of our primary tools to use for forecasting is earned value management, and we certainly need earned value management to calculate our to complete performance index. We get our earned value data through performance reviews. We use Earned Value Management to calculate variance analysis. And our project management software will also help us with Earned Value data. Microsoft Project, for example, gives you a lot of Earned Value data, provided you set it up correctly. Outputs from the control cost process include work performance measurements and budget forecasts, both of which you will achieve by the use of the Earned Value Management technique. Now just before we go ahead, a reminder that as Sir Gantelot, I have a number of other project management and Microsoft project related videos on YouTube, all of which are aimed at helping you slay those project management monsters that plague you. Monsters are management, organization, network, scheduling, and tracking errors. Okay, so back again to the PMP exam and earn value management. In order to answer Earned Value Management questions, you must be able to derive three pieces of data. And later on, you then have to apply that data to calculations, and we'll talk about that in the other two videos. But let's talk about those three pieces of data that we need. Firstly, planned value. Planned value is the authorized budget for a planned piece of work. And that's why sometimes you'll see planned value referred to as the budgeted cost of work scheduled. That version of the name helps you remember exactly what it is we're looking for here. So then let's think about earned value. This is the authorized budget for work that's actually been completed. This sometimes is referred to as the budgeted cost of work performed. Again, helps you remember what earned value is. And then thirdly, we need to know the actual costs. And those are the costs actually incurred in completing the work actually achieved, not the work scheduled, but the work actually achieved. In other words, the work as measured by earned value above. Sometimes this is referred to as the actual cost of work performed. So to help determine what those things are, let's look at an example here. Let's see how we can derive planned value, earned value, and actual costs. In this example here, a five-day schedule with four activities, A, B, C, and D. Activity A is due to be uh, started Monday morning, finished Monday evening. Activity B due to start Monday morning and finish Tuesday evening. Activity C due to start Tuesday morning and finish Wednesday evening. Activity D due to take place on Thursday and Friday. So let's think about the budgeted costs, the assigned budget for those activities. And as you'll see there, the assigned budget for activity A is $50. Activity B, $100. Activity C, $200. And Activity D, $100. So there's our plan then. Let's think about what we expect to be the case as of the end of day on Tuesday. Let's determine our planned value. So by the end of day Tuesday, we would expect, if we move according to schedule, to have completed Activity A and B, and to be halfway through Activity C. So the budgeted cost of that work that's been scheduled would be $50 for activity A, $100 for activity B, 
and half of the cost of activity C, in other words, an additional $100, giving us a plan value of $250. Now let's say that as a result of a progress report we're told when we get to Tuesday that this is what has actually happened with these activities. Activity A is indeed 100% complete but we've only done 80% of activity B and only 20% of activity C. So let's think about our own value then. Our own value, with, we have completed activity A so we've earned the value of that so we've earned $50 we've only done 80% of activity B, so we've only earned $80 worth of work. Activity C is 20% complete, so in that case we've only earned $40 worth of work. So our total would be $170. So let's think about actual costs. Let's say we're now told that in order to do that work that, actually, that has actually been achieved, it actually cost us $60 to do activity a, it actually cost us $110 to do 80% of activity B, and it actually cost us $30 to do 20% of activity C. So our actual costs in this case are $200. So just by glancing at those numbers you can see that we are behind schedule, we've only got $170 worth of work done, but doing that $170 worth of work actually cost us $200, so we're over budget as well. And we'll see how to calculate those uh, factors in terms of variance in the second video. So there's one example. Let's look at an alternative example. Let's assume what we have to do is paint the four walls of an office, and we're looking down on an office here. And the plan is to paint one wall per day and we've assigned a budget of $50 per wall. Now let's say at the end of day two we get a progress report and we hear that we have three walls completed and the total cost so far is $120. So again, let's firstly look at our planned value. As of the end of day two, we were expecting to have completed two walls and the budget for that was $50 per wall. So the planned value at this point is $100. In terms of earned value, we've actually completed three walls. So we've earned the value of three painted walls, or the assigned budget for those three painted walls was $50 a wall, $150. And again, from our progress report, we heard that it's actually cost us $120. So in this case, you can see that we're ahead of schedule. We've got $150 worth of walls done as opposed to $100 and the actual cost was only $120, so we're under budget. Okay, so now that we've derived those values, planned value, earned value, and actual cost, what can we do with them? How do we apply them going forward? Well, that's why we have three lessons in this series. I'm limited to 10 minutes for each lesson. In part two, we're looking at how we can calculate variances, schedule variance, cost variance, schedule performance index, cost performance index, and part three, we'll look at forecasting or looking ahead towards the end of the project, looking at our estimate at completion, estimate to complete, variance at completion, and the to complete performance index. So please do look for those videos on YouTube. Before closing, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I'd like you to invite I'd like to invite you to visit our sponsor, Westall Murray International. They are a project management consulting and services company. They also provide training, not only in project management generally, but in PMP and uh, Microsoft project topics based in the United States. Please do visit their website, westallmurray.com there. And I certainly thank you for watching this video, and please do come back and look at the other two parts in this series. Thanks again.